Okay friends, it's time to get started on replacing our axle. The first thing we want to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheel's off the ground. After that, remove your center cover here, all five lug nuts with a 21 millimeter socket, and then the wheel. Let's go ahead and put some penetrant on this, and this right up here. Now let's use a 12 millimeter. We'll remove this right here. Let's take a nice pry bar, get in between this area here and separate this. Now let's use our 12 millimeter socket on this bolt right here, remove this. Grab onto this, give it a little wiggle, separate it. Grab that caliper, we're going to slide this, separate it. Inspect your caliper, make sure you don't see any fluid. If you do, it's brake fluid, and then of course you'd have to replace this caliper. Assuming it looks good, let's go ahead and set it aside, making sure we put no pressure on our flex hose. Let's get the pads out of here. Moving along, we're gonna use a 14 millimeter socket and remove both of our caliper bracket bolts. The first one, I'm just gonna loosen up until it's almost all the way out. I'll leave it in there a couple threads and then we'll fully remove the other one. There's one. Let's go ahead and get this one out of there as well. Remove the bracket, set it aside. Now let's move along to using our hammer. We're gonna carefully hit along these areas here to try to break this free. Be very careful not to damage any of your studs. Now if your rotor doesn't wanna come off like ours, we're just gonna go ahead and take this screwdriver, carefully remove this boot right here. You don't wanna lose this or damage it, we're gonna be reusing it. And pop it right out of there. Now we're just gonna spin this until we can find our adjuster on the inside. Once you have it lined up, just go ahead and take your screwdriver or small pry bar. We're gonna go ahead and put it in here and we're gonna try to de-adjust that star. And go this way. When you try to de-adjust, you wanna go ahead and put it straight in up against it and then we're gonna gently lift it up. Give this a little wiggle. Remove it from the vehicle. Okay, so now that we have the rotor out of the way, we have a nice clear view of our emergency brake shoes. To start removing these, I'm gonna use some long nose pliers. I just wanna go ahead and get right onto this spring. I'm gonna try stretching it and removing it from this area. There we are, that one popped right off. Just try to remove it from the shoe. Do the same to the other one right here. Get that one out as well. Now that we have those springs off of there, we can carefully start separating the shoes here. I'm going to grab this piece. We'll pull it right out of there. Continuing with the long nose pliers here, we're going to go ahead and grab right onto this cap. What we want to do though, is we want to grab onto the sides, press it in, and then we're going to twist it. You can go counterclockwise or clockwise, but essentially you just need to have it so it lines up with the tab right here so you can remove the cap. Sometimes you have to hold the pin from the back side. I don't know which way is the best way. If it doesn't work from the outside, you can try it through here. It's really frozen on there. There we are. All right, so we have the outer portion here. And then we have the spring that goes directly behind it. We can wiggle this a little bit. We've got this tab as well. We'll set that aside. Now we can wiggle this shoe. You're gonna find another spring located right down under here. Generally, if you just go ahead and try to pull on this a little bit, you can remove the adjuster. Once you have the adjuster out of there, you'll have plenty of slack to be able to get this off. Just trying to squeeze this spring right out of here. Somebody kind of put this one in a little backwards, makes it difficult to get out. I generally put it in the opposite direction. If you can't get that spring off, that's okay. We'll just continue. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side here. I'm gonna try to find that pin from the back side. Hold it, give this a little twist. Release the pressure on that spring. 
get all this out of here. Okay, now we can swing this down. Just go ahead and pull that right out of there. This one out of here. Okay. The next thing that we're gonna do is just try to separate these ears. Sometimes they're very close together. You can just try to use something to separate them. Generally, I just try to use a screwdriver of some sort. I'm just gonna try to spread it a little bit. And then essentially what I wanna do is just slide it out and over this pin. All right, now that we got that off, let's go ahead and give this a little twist. You're also gonna find another washer on there. Try to draw this shoe right out of here. I'll try to hold onto that washer. All right, let's get that off of there. Now we can separate this. Now let's continue on to removing these pins right here. I'm just gonna pull this through. You're gonna notice that the pin that's on the rear here is shaped different than the forward pin. Slide this one out as well. All right, you can see that there's definitely a difference in these two pins. Now let's take a brush. We're gonna clean up this area. Now let's take some high temperature grease and we're just gonna start lubricating areas. We wanna go along both ends of this pin right here. That's essentially where the shoes are gonna ride. I'm gonna go right here. You can kinda of tell where there's some raised areas on the backing plate. Ours in particular is fairly rotted, which makes it a little bit difficult, but done enough breaks. You can kinda of tell where they go. Do the same on the other side of the backing plate over here. Pretty much essentially wherever the shoe seems as though it's gonna to be touching up against the backing plate. Next, we're gonna continue with that grease and we're gonna go right along this side of this. That's essentially, so when we have this up like that, it's gonna be lubricated against where the shoe is. You can go ahead and get right inside that hole as well. Now let's continue on with this adjuster piece right here. You're gonna notice one side has a threaded area. Go ahead and put a little bit of lube in there. Turn it around, you've got the flat edge. Go ahead and put some lube in that side as well. Now we'll take the threaded part of the adjuster. We're just gonna go ahead and put it right in there. Once that's in, we're gonna take the other side of this. Go ahead and slide it right in there. And now we can set this aside and let's grab one of our shoes. Let's start with the shoe that goes on the rear. That's the one that has the little piton sticking out right there. I'm just gonna go ahead and take that. We'll slide it right through this, turn it around so we can have a look. Now the next thing we wanna do is have our little washer on there. You're gonna notice that it looks as though it's bent. That's for spring tension. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slide that right in here. The next thing we're gonna do is take this little horseshoe clamp right here. Go ahead and slide it right into the groove that's on that piton. Sometimes you need some pliers to push it through. There we are. We want it to clip into position. Once you have it all the way in, go ahead and crimp it down. There we are. Now you just want to make sure that this is completely secured. Perfect. Now let's take our rearward pin. That's the one with the weird bend to it here. Go ahead and put that in through the backing plate so it comes through the hole. When you put this together, you wanna to make sure you have your pin facing the proper way. You wanna have the bend facing towards the wheel bearing. There we are. I'm just gonna to try to get the shoe semi into position here. If it feels as though it's stuck, generally it's because you have to spin that pin in the backside there, it's just holding you up. Next, we're gonna take the clip that looks like this. It's got the little piton on it. We'll go ahead and slide it right over that pin, and we want to make sure that the piton fits into the hole right along here. There we are. I've got it lined up with the hole down there. Now let's take our spring and try to slide it through here as well. We'll get that onto the clip. Leave that sitting there. Continue on with this piece right here. I'm just going to go ahead and grab it with some pliers. Try to come in through the side. Once I have it in, I need to go ahead and line it up with the pin. I'm just gonna try to twist this on here. We wanna definitely make sure that it's completely locked in. There we are. Give it a nice wiggle, make sure it's secure. Now the next step, you're gonna need to have several parts in your hand. You're gonna wanna have your green spring, looks just like this. You're gonna want the adjuster and you want it facing in this direction. We have the screw in part facing towards the rear of the vehicle. Also, we wanna have our forward shoe. We'll make sure that's facing in the proper direction as well. Now for this spring, what we wanna do is we're gonna hook it in on the back side of this shoe, but I'll show you where on this one. If you look at the back side, you can see where this little triangle is. Just scoop it right in behind there. And then essentially we'll do the same thing on the other side. Once we do that, we'll put this in and bring this right up and through. Put 
on there. Now I'm going to do the same on this shoe. It can be a little bit difficult. There we are. Now we're going to take this adjuster, like I said, just get it in between these two pieces. that side. Bring this one up. Do the same thing. Make sure that's latched in. Now let's take this rod, go ahead and release that spring. We'll get that right out of there. Put on our brand new one. At this point we're going to slide this right in and in between these shoes. Bring it down. Hook it right in here. There we are. Do the same on this shoe. As you start trying to push this together, you might notice that the spring is trying to push the shoe out. I'm just going to try to hold it up there so it can't fall apart on us. So we'll just kind of leave this just as it is right now. And then we're going to start with these springs right here. Now for this spring, what I want to do is I want to put this little hooky do inside the hole in the shoe. There we are. And now we're just going to go ahead and stretch the spring over this area right here. Be very careful for your eyes and your eyes. Watch your fingers as well. There's that one. Time for the other spring. Slide it into position in there. Okay. Stretch that right over. Just gonna press this in. Now the next thing I want to do is push that shoe right up against the backing plate there. I'm going to use a nice long screwdriver, you can use a pry bar, whatever you need to do. I'm just going to bring it right along here and that's going to essentially help hold this up against the backing plate for me so I can continue on with the rest of my hardware. Now I'm just going to take this pin, I'll go ahead and put it right through the backing plate. This one's a little bit hard because you have your ABS right in the way. Just slide that pin right through. It's hard to get it lined up. Okay. So now that I have it inside the slot right there, we can continue on. We remember this one with the tab that we did earlier. We're going to go ahead and line that up so the little piton falls into the hole on the shoe. Sometimes you just have to use a magnet on these. I could also hold that pin from the back side so it doesn't keep moving on me. Just get it lined up. Get this on here. Get that back tab lined up. Try to squeeze this in here. Hard parts holding the pin, keeping everything situated here. Press it in. I'm just going to give it a little twist. Ensure that it's completely locked in. Let's clean down our mess. Now let's take some copper never sees. We're going to try to coat this mating surface. Now it's going to be time to put the rotor on. Pay attention to this area here where the adjuster is supposed to be. It needs to line up with the larger hole. We'll slide that right on. Should slide on nice and easy. Let's take one of these lug nuts. We're going to start it right on here to hold the rotor for us. Next you're going to want to adjust your emergency brake shoes so there's little to no pressure on this rotor. You want to have just a tiny bit of rub like what you can hear right here, but you don't want to have it so it's causing a lot of drag. That's going to cause friction, friction causes heat, and you're going to find that your brake seize up on you. The way that we're going to do that is to line up the hole with the adjuster right here, and then of course we're going to use our screwdriver again. When we do this, we're going to try to turn this in this direction like this, and you can see that it's adjusting this out a little bit. If you find that you adjust it out and then you can't turn the rotor at all or it's difficult to turn, just go ahead and turn it the opposite direction and de-adjust it a tiny bit. Once you're sure you have it adjusted properly, let's continue on with our nice rubber boot here. Just go ahead and slide it in there. That's going to protect all the internals from any debris that might try to make their way in. Let's take our bracket with our bolts. I always like to use a little bit of red thread locker on these. We'll go ahead and slide it right over the rotor. We're going to line up those bolt holes, start in both of our bolts, snug them up, then torque them to 34 foot-pounds. This one's of course hard to get to. Now it's going to be time to install our brake pads. We want to have the inboard pad with the wear indicator, and we want to have that wear indicator facing up. If you have the pad with the facing down, it's not going to work right, so just go ahead and have it just like this. 
I'm going to slide it right into position. Do the same to the outer pad. Now we're going to move along to preparing our caliper. We want to have this caliper piston right here pressed all the way up into there. You can use a caliper depression tool like this. Get right in there. We're just going to give this a little squeeze. Push it back as far as it can go. Now we're going to use caliper grease directly on the caliper piston here. And then along the backside of each of these ears. This is going to help with vibration dampening and noise reduction. Now let's slide that caliper pin right into this boot here. Work it around a little bit as we go. We're going to take this, slide it right down and over those pads. Line up the slider pin with the bracket here. You now you want to double check to make sure that the boot is sitting up and over the ear of the bracket. Like I said before, you want to make sure no moisture can make its way in. Super important. Now let's get this bolt in here. We're going to bottom this out and then we'll torque it to 20 foot pounds. Once we have that all together, let's go ahead and remount our flex hose here. For this, I generally don't use any thread locker on it. You want to make sure that this can come out fairly easily in the future. Let's get our wheel on here. Now what we're going to do is just go ahead and snug these up. We'll get the wheel back on the ground and then we're going to torque these to 76 foot pounds. We've got the wheel back on the ground. Let's go ahead and torque these in a crisscross manner. Torqued. Of course, if your vehicle had the center cover, go ahead and pop that right back on. Okay, friends, we got this side back together. What's left to do now? Now you're going to do the exact same thing on the other side of the vehicle. The process is going to be the exact same. Aside from that, go ahead and hop inside the passenger compartment. Make sure you pump up those brakes. They need to be nice and firm. After that, take it for a road test.